All right, hello. So today's gonna be a very fun one, or at least it was very fun for me. So I kind of enjoyed that this one a lot. Um, it's gonna be a dryad reroll game, or it ends up being a dryad reroll game. And this is probably I don't think I'll ever play a better dryad game, or uh, I guess a more peak version of a dryad game. Uh, I think this is my peak, so it's only downhill from here. So maybe I just avoid playing this comp now. <laughs> But it was a, a very, you know, some high roll, some like giga roll. Um, anyway, so to start out the game, it is Trainer Sentinel, which just means that you get this uh, this dude now. Instead of a target dummy, you get this dude, and he has three emblems on him. So I have um, this uh, Dryad with the Reaper emblem. It actually works really well for Dryad reroll, so already I'm angling towards it. And then I've got dropped a Kindred. So I'm kind of like, mm, you know, I already have two Rek'Sai's and a Kindred. I can get my Dryad stacks in early. Dryad plus one's really strong because it makes you hit four Dryad without having to find an Orn. And hitting four Dryad early makes your stacks go through the moon, right? Um, or at least like stabilize you a lot longer because like you just gain, you just have like the uh, the Giga stacking uh, a little bit earlier. Uh, the Reaper plus one. Uh, one of the biggest problems with Dryad, like when you're playing Dryad reroll. Is that you need a cane eventually, right? And sometimes cane is hard to find. Uh, but now he's not as much because like um, the the cane board isn't as popular. Uh, back when cane was like one of the best comps, everybody was always playing towards cane and holding canes, so it's a little bit more difficult. Um, here, well fed is just for bruisers. There's not enough bruisers in Dryad, so I don't really want to dedicate myself to a uh, bruiser style build. Shock Treatment's a good option because I already have a Kindred that I can play. I just roll them because um, I was thinking like maybe Scoreboard Scrap when I sack, but then I get Learning to Spell. Um, it was probably Hold On to Shock Treatment. Uh, shock Treatment is really underrated a lot of the times, but it would be really good just to get a starting Kindred item and just to be like pretty strong off rip. Uh, but that's just like hindsight right now um, because Learning to Spell is more like a, a like, you know, I kind of rolled because I just wanted to get like a better combat. I also was thinking like maybe I could just hit Mulched or something. I don't necessarily need Shock Treatment because if I end up playing towards Gnar, um, I won't even need the uh, the Shred as much. Uh, learning to Spell is good because I already have uh, a Kindred. So Learning to Spell isn't necessarily the best thing to have. Like it's not necessarily the best uh, augment because Gnar doesn't really use the A. He uses AP really well, but he doesn't need the AP. And a lot of these other units don't, don't really matter. Uh, learning to spell is really good with like something like faded where like all the units kind of go crazy at one point right like even if you have like an ari or a yasuo or i don't know what's kindred in that comp like when you're playing like a board like faded for example all the units there's many attackers that would all really want a lot of ap so it, it works out really nicely as well as like the tanks can also use the ap um What's another comp that really likes learning to spell? Like something like Arcanist, but that's a little bit of diminishing returns. Uh, but I know that it's like really good in the stats on Faded, specifically. But either way, um, I'm just uh, going for... I'm just going to go for Gnar uh, in this case. Uh, like, sorry, uh, Kindred Gnar. Um, I have a Kindred Pair already. So this is actually a really good Dryad spot, right? Uh, when you have this Dryad Spat, you basically have two options. You're either like leveling to nine, and you're gonna play like Tempo Dryad with Faded, um, and then like that's like to you know to hit like the Azir and have like a main carry of like an Azir, or you're gonna be rerolling the low cost units and you're gonna try and hit like this Kindred three and this Nar three in order to be like really really strong for a lot of the mid game into late game. Um, that's just something. It, it, for me, it's like I think uh, it's hard to like go nine with this board anymore because uh the the syndra board is so popular now like in my lobbies i feel like in some games there's like three-way four-way contests for the syndra board and it's not even that good it's not like a an insta win out board situation in my opinion um but there's a lot of times where it's like i get dropped a syndra and then i go like bought four like that's been my experience this sixth right here it's because i got dropped two syndras in my shop and I say, oh, I guess I'll play Syndra. But then the whole lobby was fucking holding Syndras and Orns and everything else. And I just had no chance of, like, ever stabilizing. And it was, like, I needed to, like, pivot. But I was Syndra paired. So it was, like, do I actually have to sell, like, a Syndra pair when I have, like, a Syndra set up? 
just because like the whole lobby's contesting it like dummies and it's like yeah yeah actually i should have but i went sixth and you know i think i'm just gonna avoid like i think i, I think even if i hit like a syndra 2 i might just sell it just because like it's impossible to find the other units for the board right like, i think this game i couldn't find like a kindred because like everybody was holding kindreds on their benches and i just never found a kindred the whole game or some shit it was crazy anyways i digress um for now we'll just first we'll do a little bit of uh announcement thank you for all the support if you haven't subscribed make sure to subscribe we're gonna have an rp giveaway at 500 subs we just finished our previous giveaway so make sure to subscribe if you want to be entered in that uh, and uh follow the instructions when we get close to our goal thank you all right um so I don't want to look at the stats just yet because I want to look at it more in terms of like what the augments are. But I could just show you like a little bit of the build. Here I take a cloak. Uh, this might look really crazy. Um, this is like my tech when I play Dryad. I treat it like... Uh, this might sound crazy if you haven't played the last set. But the most recent set that just came out was uh, also two kindreds in my shop. I'm so... This is this is the high roll, right? It's stage 2-5 and I have five kindreds. It's like, Hello? I don't have any Nars, but that's fine. I'm, I'll take I'll take five kindreds over like a couple Nars in this case. Um, I take a lot of cloaks with this comp, right? Um, I treat this kind of like the Riven reroll comp. Do you guys remember Riven last set? Riven was eight bit, right? The eight bit feels very similar to how the Dryad tempo kind of plays out, like how the Dryad comp, how you would play around it. It's very similar, and that's something that happens right from set to set and even cross sets um some of the augments even if they're like very different in structure uh the comms kind of fall into like these buckets in your head where they're very similar in play style with 8-bit riven uh what you wanted to do is you wanted to stack early uh and you wanted a lot of cloaks because with riven the best item on riven was like bt uh bt uh quicksilver qss right so glove cloak for qss and then the cloak for the other th for bloodthirster right the thing is uh now there's a now i find a nar um we'll look at the stats after uh the three after round three two because i just want to get the augment so i can talk about the augment choice as well um uh, but basically with cloaks cloaks are good for like everything um and it, even in like comps besides dryad they're they're very they're very popular because what you can with with a cloak uh, like, let's list out all the items that are slammable in this comp. Like, all the items that you can play in this comp made with a cloak. QSS, that's good on NAR. We'll look at the stats after. BT, that's the best on NAR, right? Double BT in the stats is also really good on NAR. So if I got, got two swords, I can just make two BTs, right? Um, adaptive, right? Either as a frontline item or as a kindred mana item. Is not the best kindred mana item you really want blue buff on kindred but that's okay right um then you can make spark right if you're carrying kindred you just put a rod on that and you have a spark which is a shred component and you can also make uh even shroud right because even shroud is just uh if it, it, even shroud would be shred or would be a uh, armor shred sundering sorry is the term they use it would be armor sundering for nar so if you look at this, this is a glove, this is a sword, this is a tear, this is a rod, this is a belt. This is five out of eight components with a cloak are slammable with this comp. Like some of them aren't like the best thing, but some of them, like half of them are bis, right? Cloak really works nicely in this comp, right? And it works nicely in a lot of other comps as well. Um, but it's like, you know, obviously like some offensive components are really good. Like, you know, you can get like a... a uh, like swords and bows and all of those make a lot of sense as well uh but i'm just saying anyways learning to spell the way learning to spell works is that i also scale based on kills so having this kindred in early stacks the kindred ap which helps me a lot late game uh so as you can see here uh, i'm debating what to make now i could just make qss bt because i know that's really good on nar and i can hold this rod to make like a kindred item later uh which is totally fine um, I want to slam items because I want to be strong, but I might wait a turn to slam the items because I'll wait till this augment in case this augment gives me something crazy. Um, then I might have to change my idea. I'm already on one loss streak here, and I don't want a level to put in this Gnar, and this is my strongest board right now. Because basically, 
Um, a lot of times, like when you're playing like the Dryad comp, or if you're even playing like Tempo Dryad to play like Syndra later, um, having Faded in early is still really strong because obviously this is a Kindred 2 now that gets the Faded bonus. I'm pairing it with the Thresh just because I want the Thresh to have a little bit more frontline. Um, and I, I still want to give the Kindred attack speed. It helps you kill a lot of units. See, even though my board isn't properly scaled yet, I'm killing a bunch of units, which, still, which helps me preserve HP as well as keeps my Dryad stacks high. Um, I didn't make Econ here, that's my own bad. Too healthy is really good, uh, but then I hit Mulched. Uh, we'll talk about the stats now because I wanted to show. I end up picking Mulched, obviously. Uh, the way Mulch works is that you gain Dryad stacks and they do additional damage, which is actually insane. So um, I'm definitely high rolling the Augments, I'm definitely high rolling the amount of Kindreds. So if we look at the stats, let's go to stats. Okay, so first of all, let's just put Kindred 3, right? Let's not worry about Gnar just yet. We'll just put Kindred 3 in, right? Uh, in terms of items, typically, I think the best thing is like blue buff, red buff, and Rabadons. Like, it's all like double items, or blue buff, red buff, Morello. Yeah, because like, um, typically like before you would put like, Mor it's either Morello or red buff. So if you're making red buff, you make uh, Rabadons, basically. So for me, it's like, um, I like red buff just because if I have a Kindred 3, I want to do a main damage dealer. Morello, it doesn't do as much damage per se. Uh, and then blue buff is just like a really good item. Um, a lot of times you can still build like attack speed, something like a Nasher's 2. Sometimes I don't even make uh, the blue buff because it's sometimes a little bit expensive. Um, and Shoujin is, uh, says that it's pretty bad, right? Because Shoujin, you really want attack speed. So a lot of times I'll just like disavow making a mana item. And I know that sounds kind of bad. And then here, Adaptive Home is pretty bad, but it's still like something, right? I'm not saying it's like good. I'm saying that it's like, you know, it's something you can put on if things go bad. Uh, but usually I just make like a bunch of attack speed. Kindred has such low mana, um, uh, such a low mana threshold that if you give them something like a red, uh, if you give her something like a red buff, and like a bunch of other stuff, um, like uh, like a Shiv and a, a Nasher's tooth. The attack speed is just so fast that it's gonna, it's they're gonna cast so many times anyways, that uh, the auto attacking will be like a lot of damage, right? Uh, that's the point I'm getting at. So let's say I let's say let's, let's just assume for later I put red buff. It says Shiv is really good, obviously because it's just like building attack speed. Blue buff's really good. It says Nasher's is really good. So let's say I make like a Nasher's, right? Then blue buff. It's, it's usually blue buff, but sometimes it, it, uh, what I'm trying to say is like even if you don't hit blue buff, you'll be fine, right? Like you you won't lose the game, right? As you can see here, if you have red buff, uh, Rabadons, Jewel Gauntlet is almost as low Delta as blue buff because like the difference in mana, right? Versus having like another damage item, it, it's actually crazy, right? Like like it, it works out really nicely. That's the Kindred is pretty flexible, which is really nice. Um, we're gonna remove these things and we're gonna go on augments. So if we look at the placement of augments, right? Uh, let's go. Let's just sort by gold just to see. So um, the best placing is obviously heavy hitters. It works insanely well with dryads because it scales off their HP. Combat caster is really good. Then it says two healthy is really good, and mulch. So if you look at the stats, you probably want to take two healthy over mulched in a lot of cases. In this case, I'm kind of aiming towards the fact that I might hit 6 Dryad. If you hit 6 Dryad, then Mulched is way better, right? Um, if you look at it compared to 2 Healthy, it's it's substantially better, right? Um, if you're just playing like 4 Dryad, eh, 4 Dryad, uh, 2 Healthy is nothing that's near, but because if you're playing that board, there's just so much 2 Healthy value that it matters more than the Dryad stacks because you gain more HP with 2 Healthy. Right? Unless you're getting, unless you're hitting six Dryad. This is something that's really important. Unless you're hitting six Dryad, Mulched won't even get you there. Like, it won't even get you to more sacks, like in terms of HP given, than just playing two healthy. Because two healthy gives so much HP. It will give you, like, what? You're playing, like, five two costs. It gives you, like, 500 HP. In order to, like, get that stacks with Mulched, if you're not six Dryad, it, it, it's actually substantial, right? Uh, so that's why, but I end up taking mulch just because I said to myself, uh, the damage dealing now is really strong and uh, hopefully will cap out and uh, like I want to play for first this game. I have so many kindreds, 
right? So I'm assuming that I'll hit the Kindred fast, be able to level, find an Azir, uh, win the game, right? That's like my idea. That's why I took that one. So please uh, understand that in most cases, mulched, if you have the option of mulched and too healthy, too healthy is typically better. Uh, typically. It's, it, it, even when mulched is better, it's not by a lot. Also, there, there's not much of a difference in any case, right? It's pretty comparable. So like, you know, don't don't get all uppity. It's not that bad. But obviously, heavy hitters is always the best. Um, and then another thing I want to point out is like, if you go prismatic, one of the most important things to know is that uh, prismatic baboom, like this baboom Auckman, I mentioned it in a lot of my other dryad videos. This is something I learned from looking at the stats. Baboom is giga broken on Kindred. Like this Kindred Narline, like baboom is okay with Faded. Like it says it's pretty okay with Syndra. For some reason, like the way Kindred works as a unit, like baboom is busted. It's, look at look at the average change. This average is Kindred three averages a four with Baboom and averages a three. Like it literally improves replacement by a whole point. If you're going fourth and you get Baboom, you are going third. That's what this means, right? It it, it means that it's so strong that typically you place a whole spot higher uh, than like a whole placement higher on average, right? Um, it's insane, right? And it's much better than anything else, right? Like, almost everything else is kind of shit. Like, pumping up is alright. Freaky Friday is alright because you're playing towards, like, multiple carries. So, you can put one on Kindred and one on uh, Nar. So, it works really well because you have dual carry. A lot of the attack speed ones are really good because attack speed works really well with the Dryad comp. But, look, even, like, a Dryad crown, right? Like, just getting, like, Prismatic Dryad crown is not, it, it's, like, it's just a little bit of a difference. But Boom is so good. Um, okay, and then let's go Nar. Sorry, I'm going over the stats a lot. I just find this really fun. And also, the video is going to be quite long. So, I think it's good to just go through everything like this. Um, and this is what I was saying with items, right? So, if you look at the items, let's just go craftable. Uh, NAR 3. So, now when you put NAR 3, it's more geared towards the stats that have them as a carry. Uh, Bloodthirster, QSS, and Titans. Now, Titans is good because it gives some tankiness. He also has a little bit of an AP ratio. So, Titans works really well. Uh, sometimes you put utility item Hodge isn't as good on NAR because bloodthirster gives the bloodthirster health shield uh, Which works really well with NAR. So that's why it's usually bloodthirster over that um, Then what else do I want to show? Oh, yeah, if I make a bloodthirster This is what I was trying to say before there's, there's lots of builds but like bloodthirster bloodthirster is still negative Delta Right like double healing or like bloodthirster bloodthirster sterex. There's a lot of good combinations But it says QSS is usually the best right? And then, like, with some of these comps, sometimes you see, like, D-Claw climb up the ladder. It's because, like, whenever you have, like, a high HP unit, something like a Gnar. Um, but then, then you want, like, either double healing or double, uh, or, like, some kind of resistances. But, like, sometimes, like, Dragon Claw just randomly looks like it's really strong in some fights. These are obviously, like, very low stats. Like, this is, like, played in 7,000 games. It's only played in 150 games. So, like, it could be a little bit skewed. But, like, the funny thing with D-Claw is just, like, when, because D-Claw recovers maximum HP, right? It's, like, gain 9% max HP and every 2 seconds heal 5% max health. In some late-game scenarios where, like, you know, you're playing Dryad and they have, like, giga HP, <laughs> D-Claws are actually really funny because it, it recovers based on max health. So it recovers so much HP and become, like, unkillable demons. Anyways... Um, so that's like another thing, right? Now, Dragon Claw, maybe I wouldn't put on a Gnar because I'm putting attack items. But if you have like an abundance of cloaks, you can put it on like an Orn, right? Late game, you're probably going to have Orn 2 and it's going to have a bunch of HP. It makes it really tanky and then it can hold other defensive items and or utility items. So that's what I'm trying to say. Cloak is just like really, really fucking good in this comp. Um, in terms of actually building the comp, we can actually like build it as well. Because maybe people are new to the channel. I already did this before. But basically, you're just playing like a bunch of 2 costs. That's why 2 healthy is really good. And it's really efficient to roll for everything. Um, if you're playing uh, without spats, it looks something like... Let's just put the units in. So, Nars up top. We got Rek'Sai, Aatrox. Typically, your board looks something like... I'm just going to put Azir here on the, on the bottom corner. Because Azir is for really later. It's not for like right away and then allow so typically I have something like this um, where you're playing uh, Aatrox Shen uh, Nar Kindred 
right as like and you try and three star like a lot of people they try and three star this shenan this aatrox it's really not necessary they don't do that much because you're they're, they're probably the last units that you itemize in a lot of the situations because typically you're itemizing kindred nar and then if you have other attack items you're itemizing kane if you have tank items you're usually itemizing orn uh later right uh but so you primarily want to just hit three star kindred three star nar and then uh you're playing the rest now if you have like a spat uh, then you would play a zero over somebody and usually you put the spat on the Lowy because by the time that you uh, hit a spat if you don't hit it instantly or if you're going for max cap typically you would go for like a Lowy 3 in like the the win case and then you can play something like whatever you can just play like a Lissandra or some other shit because the board's pretty flexible um, but typically your board looks something like this now let's go back to my game uh, it's 4-4. Four, four. How much did we miss? Oh, we missed a lot. This game went by fast. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go back in the video. So this might be a little bit of a longer VOD. Uh, so... Man, I want to just go back to here. So, Nautilus grants gold on enemy kill. This is the other encounter right now. Uh, I'm slow rolling on level 6 because I'm so close to hitting Kindred 3, right? Um, I'm rolling because I have enough to sell and now I'm one off kindred so because I am one off kindred right it, it even though like you know max econ right you want max econ going into here um, I'm rolling till around 30 uh, because I'm one off the kindred right um, hitting a kindred 3 is so powerful on a carousel I made a rabidons or I think I got dropped a component I made a rabidons and then uh, I have a bow here that I want to use to make hopefully a red buff Bow is also really good because I can make red buff for Kindred, but I can also complete the last item on Gnar, which is usually Titans in this case. So I'm okay with this. But yeah, it was very high roll, right? Uh, usually you want to hit a 3 cost, like stage 4, like 4-1 four, slash 4-2. usually roll to hit like either one of Kindred or Gnar, and then you send it again later to try and hit the rest of them. So I am very ahead of tempo. Like I am very fucking strong in this lobby. Like insanely strong, right? But the problem is it's Trainer Sentinels. So the game is going to get very wacky very fast, right? Whenever you see Trainer Sentinels, I have uh, I have like Dryad, which is really good. I also have Ink Shadow, which I could have played towards. But because of this Reaper Emblem, I decided to go for this line. And I was relatively uncontested and I ran into a bunch of natural kindred. So it was kind of solidified. Uh, if you look here, this guy's 7 Fortune. Did you see that? Uh, if you don't know, first of all, what the fuck? This guy's 7 Fortune. Okay, so if you don't know, 7 Fortune, what it does is it, it's absolutely busted. In most cases, like, you need 2 Fortune Emblems, which is obviously very difficult to hit. But this guy literally had Fortune in the whole game. He has, like, an, a, an 89 charge, and he has 7 Fortune, and he's still, like, decently healthy. Now, I did a game where I got 7 Fortune. I've, I've played two games where I had 7 Fortune. Both of them were a Giga first. It wasn't even close. Now, um... How do I phrase this? Okay, so I just probably I just make red buff here because I'm like I'll either make uh, I can make like some kind of tank item for Nar because I just want to make sure this kindred continues to stack, right? I have uh, learning to spell, so I don't really care if the Nar kill steals, but I'd rather the the kindred be giga strong. So I have Rabadons and uh, red buff. This kindred is absolutely gonna shred everybody. Anyways, well, same with faded. When you have 7 Faded, the way 7 Faded works, and I showed it in my video um, a little bit ago on my channel. 7 Faded, you don't lose stacks if you win. That's like the big change with se like from 5 to 7. Like two, 3 Faded is Faded. Oh, uh, sorry. Um, fortune, 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 Fortune. Oh, that, that that's going to be confusing for new players. Okay, so the thing with Fortune, that's what I'm talking about. 7 Fortune. Um, oh, hopefully it wasn't. Uh, now I'm just stun locked. Okay. 7 fortune um the main thing is that uh 3 fortune is just fortune it's just normal cash outs um 5 fortune heals you every turn uh here i'm considering golden egg because i'm so strong it's definitely not bruiser crown uh and then i hit baboom check this out fucking gg whatever my placement was plus one minus one minus one on my placement if i'm if i'm look like i'm going second i guess what i'm going first um, also, it works really well to work into a reroll because there is a fortune player in the lobby. Now, um, fortune, like seven fortune. Um, what it does is that if you lose a fight, 
you do not uh, lose your stacks. It continues to build up your stacks. So you can keep pushing your luck and be strong. This guy, who is near the bottom of the lobby, he should be sending it every turn because the fortune cash out is going to be game winning, right? It's going to be game changing. You should just spend all his gold. Level to eight, donkey roll, uh, make your board as strong as possible because even if you win a fight, it's just more HP that you save. You're basically just stalling. You want to win. You want to stall out like five, four or five turns. Get that fortune stack up to like you know in the in the high 100s, right? Maybe even a 200 cash out, and you just win the game, right? I don't know what this guy is doing, but he's not like sending it. And he and what he did is the way that he sent it was he like rerolled on seven for like Zoe three and like Tristana three. Which is fine. It's like, yeah, you're going to keep them on your board a while because you're fortune, right? It makes sense, like, in some school of thought. But why? Just just play, like, a, just, just level and play random shit. Play as many costs as possible. And then he cashed out early, right? Which is fine, right? It's totally fine to cash out early. He cashes out. He has, like, a bunch of radiant. He has a radiant item, Kane. And he should be strong now, right? So I don't know what the cash out was, but it was definitely not, like, 150. Seven fortune. It was like one of the sub 100 cash outs, right? Or not sub 100, it was one of the sub 150 cash outs, right? I'm not going to look into it because I don't really care. But I feel like that's, that's just troll, right? Because like I understand maybe he's like stressed because he's like low HP. He should be winning the lobby now, right? So I'm just playing for like, you know, as high a placement as I can get, honestly. Um, because that guy's probably going to go first, right? If, if we're being honest, the, the chances are that guy goes first. Um, if you saw my thumbnail spoiler, he doesn't, but like, um, I don't understand what, what he did. Cause from that spot, what you can do now is you've already got one cash out. What you do is your seven fortune continues to stack and he's keeping seven fortune in. So because your seven fortune continues to stack and every turn you recover HP because it's seven fortune, it still counts the five fortune buff. What you should do with it is now that you have a strong board, you should just continually push your luck with the fortune. To, again to get like another 150 cash out like you know just keep getting 100 100 plus cash outs like look at the fortune table and look at what you need the most and just get it and every turn you get free loot anyways on top of that so it's like what are you doing also there's this riot baby shark in the lobby i just want to say that if he looks at this item combination and he sees what my kindred does late game uh don't be surprised if baboob gets nerfed <laughs> next <laughs> next game uh because i had ink shadow and i had a plus one spot i just put in this uh senna because it gives my nara third item for the time being tattoo of vitality isn't that great it just recovers max hp but i'm playing dryad so it kind of synergizes okay uh, that's just why there's a random Senna on my board, in case you were wondering. It's just because I have this emblem, so it gives my Nara an extra item. And it's like, what else am I going to play? An Arcanist? A Sniper? Well, no, that's because of the thing. A Behemoth, probably. That's like, if I hit an Orn. But as you can see, I'm getting a lot of stacks and a lot of power. Anyways, watch this Baboom damage. Everybody's going to get fucking shredded. Bang! Look at that! Thousand, a thousand, a thousand. Everybody's fucking dead. Yeah, so stage four or five. This was this is a pretty much right. I lost one fight or so. I'm not too concerned with money or, or like anything in that level. And I hit an Azir. So, um, I hit an Azir on seven. This is another part where really high roll. Obviously, if you're going first, right? Like in this game, I end up going first. There's no way you go first in a lobby like this unless you high roll, right? Let's be honest. There's a seven fortune player, right? It's a fucking travesty. This guy doesn't go first. Guess what? We're not even scouting because I'm just so focused on my board. This was like done late at night. I was just like playing. I was just grinding offline a little bit, right? We haven't even scouted yet. There's other boards that are going to fucking be strong as shit. I'm telling you now, this was not a lobby I thought that I was going to win. I was kind of just going for reroll because in my head, I was like the fortune player is going to win for free. So I just want to preserve HP, right? A lot of times with rerolls, you're playing for top four rather than playing for first, right? If you high roll your reroll, like kind of like how I'm high rolling this, I have this kindred three learning to spell. So my kindred's gaining AP, gaining dryad stacks, has bonus damage from dryad, has bonus damage from this, has bonus damage from this, has bonus damage from this. He literally has bonus damage from Rabadon, bonus damage from uh, 
from red buff he has bonus damage from baboom which is like constantly up it's like bis augment he has bonus damage because he's a dryad and mulch gives 10 percent bonus damage as well and then he's scaling ap with every time he kills uh, every time he kills a unit also i keep saying he i'm sorry i know it's a she uh i know kindred uh is she i was corrected that one point uh i just kind of like say he all the time i even call like janna sometimes i say he I, I, and I apologize if that is something uh, I do not mean any offense whatsoever. Uh, it's just I Speak too fast sometimes. Uh, anyways, I make a giant slayer for the kindred uh, the giant slayer is Like I said, I didn't get a mana item, but I made like another attack speed item, right? Because it's a bow item. So it grants some attack speed um, Right now. I'm just rolling for an orn. So I leveled to eight and I'm just sending it for an orn because I just want six dryads. Six dryads is a huge buff. As you can see here, because I hit the kindred so early, um, I didn't hit the gnar yet. I am one off the gnar now. On my roll down, I found quite a few gnars. Um, and then, like, look at this board. I haven't I haven't checked it on this board in a while. Um, yeah. I thought my board was strong. What's happening here? Oh, is this a mythic crown? And he's level nine, and he has a way too. Or he has a way. Uh, yeah, there's a 10 mythic player in the lobby. Just out of nowhere. So, yeah, we haven't even looked at that board. Uh, so now, in my head, I'm like, okay, I'm playing for third maybe. Because there is a fortune player and a 10 mythic player in the lobby. Uh, right now, I'm just rolling deep because I'm trying to find... Uh, I, I end up finding like an orn 2 out of nowhere, which is kind of crazy. But I'm looking for a the last gnar, right? I'm, I'm one gnar off. So it's kind of worth it to roll. Uh, usually you're playing like four ghostly with the with the cane. Uh, the, four, the six dried is way more important than the ghostly. And I also already have the reaper synergy because of my, my dummy. My dude right here. So um, I don't think Kindred needs the... Uh, like I don't think I need this cane. So it's kind of like a waste of gold for me because I'm not going to slot it in at any point. Now I could play four Reaper for her. Like I could play like four Reaper uh, and like, you know, like level up and I, I just put in one Reaper and level up again. Maybe or swap something out. Uh, anyways, I hit the Gnar 3. My Dryad stacks, everybody's gaining like 1,300 HP right now, which is kind of nuts. So we are doing great. Um, and yeah, this guy's just level 10. I don't understand what he did because like can we just look at this fortune board I'm pretty sure I beat this right now in my head I'm like yeah just play me like fuck it I'll win right now he's seven fortune right but he has this he has four emblems right if he held on to the fortune units he can be nine fortune which is like an easter egg and i think it goes nuts i think you get better rewards for it by the way uh but it only happens if fortune starts dropping you a bunch of emblems i'm pretty sure when he took call to chaos he got like emblems right because i think or something like that but like he has a trist on a three my friend showed me this told me this after because i didn't even notice it when i was playing it because she kind of blends in with everybody else why does he have a tristana three with triple items and why are they these items I'm pretty sure this is the worst Tristana I've ever seen in my life. So, the reason I'm pointing it out is because it makes me sad. Because, like, when I was playing this game, I thought I was so... Like, I thought I was a G. Right? Like, I thought I was cool. I was like, holy shit. I outplaced a 7 Fortune player. I was, like, so proud of myself. And now I just feel like an idiot. I'm like, why... why what am I doing here? Like, I'm sitting here. I'm scouting. I'm... I'm trying my best. I'm stressed out my mind. I'm, I'm, I'm checking this fortune player constantly. And I'm going up against a Tristana with better fucking gnar items than my gnar. You know what I... Like... I just want to rank up. I just want to rank up. Like... Anyways, everybody else is just fucking getting slaughtered. So this guy... He was like win streaking the whole game. He has Wrath of the Moon. He was playing towards Alu Nione. Um, Wrath of the Moon is really, really strong. He also has Jewel Lotus, which is maybe a little bit of diminishing returns because so much crit chance from the other stuff. But it's like pretty good still. Anyway, there's a Dryad Spat. I don't really need anything else. I could get Spark for Shred. Um, but uh, like 
you know, dry this this frees up a spot, right? Like I can lose Rek'Sai and I can play something else. I could also play four Reaper if I really wanted to. Spark gets taken, so it's either a tank item or a Dryad spat. I just take the Dryad spat. So the reason I take the Dryad spat is because like even if you consider a tank item a tank item, this Dryad spat, even if I play like seven Dryad, it literally gives somebody like a thousand five hundred health. Right? This is like two war mogs. This is like if on the carousel spinning, there was all the items and then one guy had two war mogs. And you're like, oh shit, two war mogs, a bug, and you just take it. That's how good this dryad spat is. Right? Um, now I could drop somebody. Like, I, like the chances are, something that I could do really easily is I can drop this Azir. Because even though it's a zero, it's a zero one, the Azir does bonus damage, but who cares, right? And that's what I end up doing, right? Um, I just play this random Morgana because in my head I'm like I can level and play Sage. Uh, Morgana's good synergy. If I get some kind of item, she does like good AOE spread because I have good single target, right? A lot of times when you're playing uh, comps, uh, you want to balance your single target damage with like AOE spread because your single target, like the AOE, will help that per will help your your single target do damage, but at the same time the AOE will like weaken everybody else. Which makes it easier for your main carry to like actually like go around and not get stuck, right? Also, I don't understand what this guy's doing. He's rolling on like like can can we take a second to like 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 how do I phrase this? Like like respectful in a respectful way, right? This is something I know is in the game. I, I'm I'm talking about this fortune player because like I think like this is a good learning moment for if you were in a high roll spot like fortune. I think he just panicked, right? And this is why you have to be level headed, right? Why is he holding six Azirs? I have an Azir. You can't hit Azir three. Do, do you get what I'm trying to say? Like, like he's level 10, like infinite gold, constantly cashing out fortune, infinite resources. Go for like any other five cost. Like what? Like why is he going for the one five cost that like... Like he can't hit. Like the only other one he can't hit his way. Like the only other one legitimately that he cannot hit his way. Like the only one that he can't hit his way. This guy has a way and that's it. That's the only one he can't he can't hit. Is Hui and Azir. And he's picking and he's buying a bunch of Azirs. Like I know he's like he's probably trying to thin the pool. But the thing is, it's like <sighs> Like I understand you're trying to thin the pool, but it's like it's so much wasted gold. Like he has 30 gold on bench instead of gaining interest, holding units that will never hit. He will never hit. Like he's hoping that I die with max HP before everybody else. Like that's that's the only game plan he can have. Because the thing is, he's learning he's losing 30 gold, plus he's losing three gold per round because of that 30 gold. So every round that he holds those five Azirs or those six Azirs, he's losing three gold. So you already lost 30 gold and you're losing three. What you should do is you shouldn't even make the Azirs. If there's one unit that you can't hit, like you can buy them because maybe he's trying to prevent, maybe he's buying them to prevent me from hitting Azir too because he thinks that's going to cap my board out higher. I really don't need to play Azir and I'm probably never going to play Azir on this board. Like legitimately, I don't give a fuck. I have a Nar and I have a Kindred and I have a Boom. I'm fine. I don't need the Azir 3, right? I don't need any Azir 2, right? So I don't know if he's holding it to grief me. Like that makes some sense. But if he's holding it to try and hit, it's like, bro, just like, you know, you can hold all the other five costs for the same price, but at least you have a chance of hitting them, right? If you're going to use your gold, buy the ones that you can hit. Now, maybe obviously, like, the situation is different. You might have just hit all those Azirs and you just bought them on instinct. But it's like, I don't get it. Anyways, did you catch what happened in the last fight? Uh... Did you see this fight? I, I kind of wasn't talking about it. This is the 10 Mythic guy, by the way. But I'm not fighting a clone. This is 10 Mythic. I have Nar 3 now. Guess what? Fucking GG. 10 Mythic. 10 Mythic. His fucking... He has the fucking disco lights going. It says 10 Mythic. And it's like fucking purple colored and all that shit. Like it's all bright and colorful. And guess what? I just fucking railed him. Why? My, item, my augments are so fucking good. Also, this game is going long. I, I don't even know what my AP on my kindred is at. And honestly, I don't think we should look at it. I don't think we should look at it. You know why? Because that's just going to scare people. I'm going to have nightmares. Like, like, 
like uh, people will see this kindred and it probably has like over 400 ap i don't know let's just assume ball bar this guy she's she's fucking shredding she's been in the whole game Uh, I'm thinking either Spark or Shiv. I probably want to put Spark just because it's an Orn. Uh, like Orn, Orn, Orn's really strong right now. Uh, my Dryad stacks are going nuts, so it's a really good frontline item. And uh, having Orn, uh, I'm trying to position my Orn such that it gives an item to like Shen or something like that, right? It's pretty nice. I don't think I played the Fortune guy like this whole time, by the way, right? So the entire stage I dodged the Fortune guy. You might think that's like, oh, that's 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 bad, like you know. Anyways. Look at him! Look at him! This is why I was ranting about it. He's holding every copy of Azir except this one. He found eight Azirs and he's holding all of them. Why is... Like, there's no way he didn't see other five costs. He can go for set three. He can go for uh, Irelia three. He can go for Wukong three. He can go for... Like, pick any other five costs. Like, what are you doing? You're seven fortune. Like, Hello? That's crazy. That's the craziest shit I've ever seen. Is he literally just trying to grief me? Like the only the only plausible explanation for that is that he's trying to grief me. I beat him anyways. I'm not even scared about him. I was thinking about the 10 mythic guy. <laughs> anyways, uh, I could probably lose ghostly for faded here and give faded faded bonus to my my uh my kindred, which will be really strong. Okay, so now we put a Hui in. And he's trying to duplicate. He thinks he's going to live five rounds to duplicate this Azir. Like, that makes sense. Maybe he sold the other five costs. Right? Like, he literally is all in on hitting Azir when I'm holding an Azir. Like, can, can we fathom? Can we, can we take a second to just use our heads a little bit? Please. Like, if this is you in your games, don't do this. Like, what? He has to live five turns? He couldn't even beat me. Like, look at your Tristana. You think this Tristana is going to do shit all to my Gnar? That Tristana is going to get fucking railed by my Gnar. I have Baboom. I have Mulch. Like, what? Ugh. Oh. It makes me sad because in the moment, I wasn't, like, thinking about the board. I looked at the board afterwards, and I was like, what the fuck was this? But, like, in my head... I was like thinking I'm so good. I was like, man, I'm so cool. I beat seven fortune. That's how good I outplayed these people. I'm the best high roller there ever was because I converted my high roll position. I beat ten mythic. I like you know I was I was gassing myself up and then I showed it to my friend. And my friend's like, what's this guy's fortune board? Like he's kind of trolled the game, no? And I was like, oh yeah, okay maybe I wasn't maybe I didn't deserve the win because I think if that fortune player wasn't trolling, also I lost to the the I couldn't see the HP because of the bug. But I lost to the Mythic guy this turn. So that's a little bit scary. Because um, now I might actually lose to the Mythic guy. Uh, there's a Faded Emblem on Carousel. I kind of try and pretend like I don't want it. See, like I'm kind of like hovering a tier. He takes Heavenly. Um, Heavenly is a good buff for him, which works nicely. But this Faded Emblem, it allows me to get back in Ghostly with this Morgana. Uh, so I just put this. I can go for Syndra too. Now... Um, well, you're gonna, I, now this is the important part. This is probably the most important part, like useful thing that you can watch this uh, video for. Um, a lot of times, especially with myself, I don't scout sometimes. I don't position well sometimes. That is a skill like you have to be really dialed in. You have to be constantly like looking at boards. But there's a lot of identifying the win con, right? And sometimes that's a problem that makes scouting really difficult as well as positioning really difficult. So what we're going to do is we're going to watch this fight and we're going to analyze what goes right and what goes wrong, right? So me, I'm rolling pretty aggressively. He might just hit, this guy might just hit a way three. He has zero gold, but he's uh, two off and he's duplicating, right? So this way gets duplicated in two rounds. Um, so that's really scary. Uh, so if he finds the last, the last way and it duplicates, he wins. So I have to roll pretty aggressively here to make sure that that doesn't happen. So we lost this fight, right? Uh, we'll go back a little bit. Just to rewatch it, just in case you didn't see. So what's happening this fight? What's going wrong here? So my Nar, my Nar is shredding, right? Lilia and this are on this side. My Kindred is shredding. Um, but if you look at this, this Nautilus isn't getting targeted, right? 
So my my kindred got stunned there and died, right? It happened multiple times in the fight because the uh, the Nautilus just didn't get targeted because all my damage was on this side and the Nautilus was on this side, right? So the problem is, is that like, what do I do about that, right? Um, now the kindred getting stunned is really bad because most of my damage is my kindred, right? And most of my damage is also my Nar, but my Nar was kind of doing work, but my kindred wasn't doing as much work, right? And my kindred is the one that has like the giga stacks from the learning to spell. So, hmm, what can we do to improve this? Anyways, I'm rolling for this way just to try and deny it. Um, so that's my adjustment, right? What I do is I position my kindred right in front of this uh right in front of the nautilus as well as my my uh i put my my dude here as well because hopefully it dies the nautilus didn't even get a cast off did you see that i killed the nautilus instantly so now my kindred has free roam right and as you can see this fight is not even close like, it's kind of close because yeah like he killed my whole board except the kindred and the nar but is it actually close no um okay so what this guy is doing is he's doing the tech where he's one off of the duplicate so he is uh, waiting to duplicate the way until he finds the last way, right? Because then it guarantees the way three. I find the way. So now there's only one left in the pool and he has to find it. So um, he was a little bit greedy on it. Not necessarily, I wouldn't say it's greedy, but basically what you do, um, I'll pause it just to explain the concept. You might think that he trolled, but it was actually a good play. It just didn't work out for him because my board is just stronger than his, right? What you do here is he's not duplicating, right? The reason he's not duplicating is because there's only nine ways in the pool. So it's going to be very hard to find the last way. So instead, what he's doing is he's, he's holding the duplicate because he wants to try and find one more way, then duplicate it, and then hit the way three. It's a greedy way of doing it, but it's actually like a better way. But what that is contingent on is you have to live another turn. Because like, you know, you can just do he could have just duplicated the way here. He would have he would have been one off. And then he could just hope to high roll for the last way. Right? If he thinks that his board is stronger than mine and I'm like a couple more lives, right? Because it's gonna take at least two or three matches to kill me, right? And it, depending on how bad of a loss. It's gonna be stage seven, so it's probably only gonna be two fights. So what he's thinking is, okay, I win one fight, I have two I have basically like three or four rounds to find one way before I can just guarantee the win. So what he did is not necessarily bad. The problem is this doesn't work because it's checkmate anyways, right? You just have to go for the high roll, right? His better play here was just to duplicate the way and hope that he just naturals the last one. He just has to hope that it just appears in his shop because he's, he's fucking cooked, right? I identified the win con, right? Now it's up to him to identify the win con as well, right? The win con is his Nautilus can't die first. Right? His Nautilus needs to get its cast off to stun my kindred, right? That's the only way you could possibly sway the fight to make it a little bit more RNG. Because 10 Mythic, they are giga tanky, they are giga strong, they do a lot of damage. So the only way to really uh, compete with me is that you have to remove... Like, I'm a 2 unit show, right? My whole board's really tanky, but in terms of damage, I'm a 2 unit show. I'm Nar and I'm Kindred. If you stun them, or you remove one of them completely like by stunning the Kindred, that's it. The game's fucking over for me, right? That's the win con, right? And that's what I mean. I identified it as such. I, I got like tank guns on my sit on my fucking dude. This sucks. Uh, I'm rolling aggressively for this last way, and now he's rolling aggressively. I don't know if he finds the the last way or not. We'll see. I think he does, but it's not. There's not enough time to duplicate it. No, he doesn't. So he's still two off. So it it, in, it didn't work out anyways. But he doesn't identify the win con, right? Like, look, this 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 guy, he gets one cast off, right? So it's already a little bit scarier. This this fight might be a little bit closer. Uh, but yeah. Uh, my kindred, because he puts the way in the middle, like what he did is he tried to um, he tried to put his uh Lilia and his way on the same side as my kindred Nar. In hopes that like this this way cast like chews away at my units. My units have too much HP. You just have to put if he moved this Nautilus onto this side, he probably has a he has a good chance of winning the fight. That's all I'll say. He has like a really good chance of winning the fight. 
But because he put his carries on the same side of my Kindred, my Kindred just killed them first. So it's not even it's it's even less close than last time, right? Um, and yeah, that's a that's an easy first place. That's an easy win for me. Uh, hopefully I get a lot of LP. What did I? How much did I get? Did I see? Oh, it's still loading. Oh, it doesn't show. Oh, yeah, promoted diamond two. I think I got like fifty from this, which is fine. Uh, but yeah, really good kindred spot from the start. I high rolled a lot because I got a bunch of kindreds early. Learning to spell, mulched. I was giga scaling into late game, and then baboom out of nowhere just guarantees like a first. Uh, the seven fortune guy trolled, so feels bad, right? I wish I wish the fortune player had like a really strong board so that I can kind of gauge how strong I was. But in that case, I probably wouldn't have gone first. And yeah, ten mythic. Fuck that. Get that. Get that shit out of here. Just easy win. All right, uh, yeah, this was my best. This is probably the peak dryad game I'll ever have. So, Godspeed. Uh, hopefully your dryad games go as well as this. See ya.